Hi everybody and welcome back into the workshop. Um, this is a bit of a follow on video from my previous video where I showed you my hardening and tempering. And um, the reason I didn't say exactly why I um, I didn't mention specifically my sort of hold times and my temperature values is that something that I've experimented with over a number of years now to, to get to the sort of figures that I want. Um, and my advice is I would encourage anybody uh, that's thinking about doing this to uh, experiment for themselves and find out for themselves. But anyway, um, that, that, that way, I mean, don't take any, anything that anyone says for granted. You know, make your own assessments and do your own tests, your own edge retention tests and strength tests, etc. like I've done. You know, I've, uh, I've really sort of um, fussed over these knives to get them to the level they're at now. And the heat treat I'm very happy with. So anyway, this is my hardness rock roll tester. Um, I showed you it before, but I've never been able to sort of show you it in, uh, in a sort of ultra wide angle view. Uh, so you can see the whole workings of the machine. You can see the dial. This is the anvil. In here is a diamond indenter. On the back there's a, a, a rotary wheel which selects um, the, load, the, the test load force. Uh, and then you've got your load and unload levers here. And I'll show you it in operation. Uh, I've just finished a batch of wisps and I've just ground all the steel, ground all the decarb layer away, so I'm down to good, good clean steel now. It is imperative that there's, steel, that there's no decarb at all on the blade, so I've noticed with this machine, if you get any decarb, you get erroneous readings. So you've got to have the, the steel really, really clean. You've got to have the anvil super clean. Um, you don't want a speck of dirt or dust or anything under there. Uh, ideally, to get really, really accurate readings, you need to be in laboratory uh, circumstances. You know where there's a clean room, uh, where the anvil, where the um, the tester will uh, sit either on a, a metal or a concrete bench. Um, I've built one on a stout wooden bench. Uh, you want uh, a, a temperature to remain constant uh, and even then you're probably going to get an accuracy with this machine to plus or minus one third of a, a rock roll point. Uh, so working in this environment here in, a, in an outbuilding where the temperature fluctuates, where there could be bits of dust floating around and it's the same for any um, small scale knife maker, you're not going to get uh, super accurate readings because these aren't laboratory conditions but um, you're going to get uh, an indicator from this as to uh, whether your heat treat is, is where you want it to be or not. Um, the other thing is that the modern steels especially the steels that, which are coming from Germany which, is the, which are the steels that I use are extremely consistent and I've measured um, Oh, po possibly uh, 100 knives now using the German steel since I've had this machine and uh, the, the consistency is remarkable um, so uh, that's uh, German engineering for you I suppose but uh, anyway you see I'm really making sure I get this as clean as I can and I'm probably going to even degrease it with some paraffin or something in a minute just to make, I get it, make sure I get it super clean. Let's just get a bit of uh, have some methylated spirits in it. Got some of that down here. sure that angle is super clean. I'll make sure the test piece too is as clean as you can get it. One of the fatal errors I was getting in the past, I was getting debris in the lanyard holes and then I was putting it on here and manipulating it and bits of debris were falling out and uh, being compressed underneath the uh, the test piece during 
the sort of the uh, testing and so forth, it was giving me erroneous readings, and I was just getting all sorts of uh, problems, thinking I'd made mistakes here and all there. But it was just a little bit of dirt, which you just got out and just thrown the readings out. So you, so you really want to make sure you're as clean as you can be, and also you want your blades to be as flat. You want any warping. If you've got any warping or any gap underneath the anvil when you uh, and underneath the piece part when you apply the test load that will give you a false reading as well so that's as clean as I can get it so now it's a matter of now bringing in that preliminary load Right, the diamond is just about to make his contact now. I'm looking for three rotations of the wheel, smoothly as possible. Stopping at 12 o'clock. So I've got the little hand there on the red and the big hand on the 12 o'clock. The C scale is on the outer ring. And the inner ring is, the, is the, the, the B scale. So we're looking for a C scale reading. Um, somewhere over here eventually. So now I'm going to apply the test force by, uh, by pulling this lever here. This is the, uh, the unloading lever. So I've pulled that. And now the force is being applied, the test force is being applied. And it should come round and it should stop around about here somewhere. There we go. I was in my early days when I didn't quite know how the machine worked and how to get the readings accurate. I'd get the, the needle would come up over here somewhere, and it would only do that when there was a decarb layer present. So now I know that with that needle being in that sort of area there, that my, my blade isn't uh, decarb. I've ground all the decarb away and I'm bound to a good steel. Now uh, it's just not now a matter of waiting just for a few moments to let everything settle. Uh, I don't want any movement at all in that needle. I want to make sure it's completely settled and found its, its position. I can't see any movement on it at all now. It's quite a fine needle and you can sort of see any slight movement over the sort of 30 second period or see if it's moved a little bit. Well, it doesn't seem to have moved, it seems to have stopped. So now what I do, this is the uh, loading lever again, I'll take the force off now. And as I remove the force, the needle will swing round and give me my final rock roll reading. Which in this case reads uh, 59.4 HRC. Uh, so I don't know if, I, if you can see that on this, I'll just take you off the, off the tripod and uh, bring you in for a closer look. There we are, 59.4 HRC. Um, that makes me feel very, very happy. I know that's a, a very good reading. One other thing I almost forgot to mention um, is also the, the, the surface, your, te your test piece, the surface of that test piece needs to be as smooth as possible. Uh, to get really accurate reading, it needs to be even polished. Um, which isn't always feasible because uh, you know I hand rub my knife to 600 grit but certainly if you were to test it say on a, on a 120 grit finish or a, possibly even a 240 grit finish you would uh, get uh, probably woefully inaccurate readings so uh, you need to have a, a fairly fine grit 